Hi, my name is Rod Cleef, and I'm the host of the Lifetime Cash Flow Through Real Estate Investing Podcast. And every week I interview multifamily rock stars, and we talk about how they built incredible wealth for themselves and their families through multifamily properties. So hit the like and subscribe buttons to get notified every Monday when a new episode comes out. Let's get to it. Welcome back to Multifamily Rockstars. Now, this is where we interview people that are crushing it in this business. And we show you guys the inside scoop of multifamily investors are creating massive success in their businesses and in their lives. And as always, we've got our co-host is the director of my massive action team and for our warrior group, Mark Nagy on the line. Mark, what's up, brother? Hey, not too much, Rod. Doing phenomenal here. Just uh, super excited to sit here and learn from our amazing guest today. Yeah. Well, listen, let me introduce our amazing guest today, who happens to be one of my favorite people on the planet. And I do not say that lightly. Um, her name's Mandy McAllister. And man, and I'm going to tell you some stories about Mandy just because I can't wait to do that. But um, She's a single mom, which just is like so freaking dear to my heart. She's got an adorable little guy. She's got over 200 doors that she's involved in. Um, and um, she, when did you join my warrior program? It, you were like one of the first. Yeah, uh, about three years ago or so. Three years ago. I, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, welcome to the show, Mandy McAllister. Well, Let me tell you my favorite story of Mandy. Okay, so <laughs> so sorry. I got to steal. I got to. And then I'm going to have you talk about how you got into this. But so so. I get a call from this lady and she says, I want to come visit and say hi. And she'd been listening to the podcast and, but she won an award. This is Mandy, of course, won an award in her medical sales company. And she was getting an, um, uh, uh, presented the award in Orlando. And she said she was more excited to meet me than to get the award, the top award in her company, which of course, you know, I hate it. I hate it hearing that. And then she brought me this awesome gift of popcorn from Chicago. Anyway, that's my favorite Mandy story, but it's so, so awesome to have you on the show right now. I can't even tell you. It's, thank you. It's, it's so full circle, you know? Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. I love it. So, so talk a little bit about your journey. So let's start there. Sure. So I, I'd been interested in real estate investing for some time and bought a condo to live in, knowing that I would burr that at some point, the time frame wasn't what I anticipated. But then I, uh, for the first acquisition for express purpose of um, investment, I found a fourplex that made a ton of sense and I was shaken in my boots to do it. And this was back in the day when you used to do these uh, 30 minute calls with listeners. So oh, I, I booked my I little forgot. time. Yeah. I forgot we had one of those calls. That's right. Yep. Those free calls. That's funny. <laughs> awesome. I, so I still go to that hospital for work. So every time I'm sitting in that hospital parking lot, I think of that conversation that we had. Hmm. So, uh, you know, based off of a conversation with somebody who knew what they were doing and had looked at a ton of deals, you told me, yeah, I'll do that day. I'll do that deal seven times today, if you'll let me. And that gave me the confidence to, to move forward. It's actually still one of my very best performing assets in my portfolio. So that was step number nice, one. Nice, 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 nice. I love it. So, you know, Let's, let's, I want to start somewhere because you are an incredible communicator. Uh, you know, you're top, top salesperson at your, in your medical device company. And so what I'd like to do is have you describe how you put a team together and maybe the different functions inside the team. So it'll help people understand the, the various personality types and skill sets that can come together into this business. Could you, mm -hmm. could you elaborate on that? Cause I know you'll be able to articulate yeah. well. <laughs> well thanks. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I started kind of doing it all myself and it does mm -hmm. become tremendously easier when you can kind of divide and conquer. Right. So um, I'll, I'll highlight the relationship that I have with my business partner in the 53 unit JV that we mm -hmm. just took down. Um, I am, I'm kind of an outgoing communicator, but also, uh, you know, love the due diligence. I'm highly analytical. My master's is economics. Uh, but my business partner that I, you know, met through the warrior program, mm -hmm. um, is a broker by training out of Chicago. So in terms mm -hmm. of the knowing to look for this on a roof or that on electricity in terms of the nuts and bolts of property, he is that guy in spades. And I'm more the, you know, communication and the spreadsheet type of girl. So wow. we other quite well. 
I'm surprised, actually. I did not expect to hear that. I did not realize you had an economics degree, and I assumed you were going to tell me that your partner was more of the analytical, but you're both you're both those both pieces. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that's that's so, guys, you know, you probably heard us talk about it before on the show. It, whatever your superpower is, you can bring it to this business. If it's communication, if it's analytics, if it's process driven, um, if you've got some framework in real estate in the past, not that you have to have it, but you, you know, like, like, like Mandy's partner was a broker or maybe property management, maybe finance, maybe insurance, you know, things that tie into real estate, those all apply. You know, even if you've just got a, a, a decent net worth and you want to get into real estate and you bring that to the table, you know, uh, uh, so, so there's so many ways that uh, you can, you can get into this business and get started. Um, even if you think that you can't, you, you likely can uh, because it's a team sport. So uh, Mark, go ahead. Absolutely. Yeah. So I, I remember, Mandy, you were telling me earlier, you, you've done what a lot of people like to do, right? They say you always want to you know, try and start out passively investing in syndication. A lot of people want to do that, right? And then you kind of moved into doing some of your own deals, obviously. How, how'd you end up making that transition and, and why did you end up doing that? Yeah, I, I done like a number of small multis on my own and I knew I wanted to go bigger. So I wanted to understand what the communication looked like, what the process looked like, what was different in 130 unit versus my fours and sixes and eights, right? So I chose to go into a deal passively. And one thing that I think is worth pointing out is I didn't want to mess with my liquidity, but I still wanted to do that learning. So I self-directed an IRA. So that I had dollars that wouldn't, you know, mess with my straight liquidity that I could only invest in properties if I was self-directing it and putting it into syndications. So, you know, we did that first syndication that was a real home run, um, ended up, you know, just through relationships. I met a guy that was on the, the GP and um, went in on it about uh, January of 2018. And then 22 months later, we're full cycle on it. Um, ended up making 50% of my money in 22 months. So that was a real home run. Wow. And the neat thing there is I, I get the structure. I get, you know, how syndication makes a ton of sense. And it's really informed, though I've chosen to do joint ventures in my kind of more active roles to date. Um, you know, I have it in my Rolodex of things that I can do in terms of um, communication that uh, I want to provide my investors. So nice. Wow. Nice. So how, how involved were you then in, in that syndicate? You said you knew the one of the general partners. Mm -hmm. what, what did you learn or how involved? Was it purely passive or did, did he bring you in to, to learn anything along the way? Yeah, well, we did a number of calls. We were we were friends and kind of contemporaries coming up through getting into syndication. And, um, you know, it, he was very accessible. I had an opportunity to ask any questions that I had. But seeing the cadence of the uh, communication was really quite good. And I, I know that it was probably uh, an easy one for him because we, we did so well on it. You know, the business plan was really a no brainer. Um, so it was probably a very easy one to communicate. I, I haven't seen the communication of when things are going poorly. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, he was always very accessible. Nice. Love it. Nice. That's nice. awesome. Yeah. So, and so, and get, hold on, let me, let me interject something on, on that thought, if you don't mind. Um, so, you know, if, if you're out there and you're a limited partner, um, you know, and, or you're thinking about being a limited partner in a deal and investing in a deal, ask the operator how accessible they're going to be. Uh, you know, do you know, like, for example, we just we're taking down a deal in Dallas right now that we're, we're raising equity for. And we had probably 12 of our warriors there helping us do the due diligence so they could learn that process. So, you know, and, and you know, we spend a lot of time trying to educate uh, our our passive investors. So, you know, ask ask that question for sure. Uh, in fact, on that note, um, yeah, on that note, I've got a, a, a list of questions. Let me just find it real quick. Yeah, questions to ask a general partner before you get into syndication. I'll give it to you guys for free. Um, just text, let's see, GP questions to 441411. I hope that's right. GP questions to 41411. If that's not right, DM me and I'll kind of correct that, but I'm pretty sure that's it. And we'll get you that list of questions because you, you've got to ask those questions up front so you don't get into a deal um, that, you know, with an operator that doesn't know what the heck they're doing. You want to be very careful with your hard earned money. Um, but, uh, and there was one other thought I was going to say about that. What the heck was it? Nah, I lost it. 
anyway, go ahead, Mark. <laughs> so, so from doing that, obviously that sounds like a home run. That's awesome. You learned a lot. You made some good money, which is great. How'd you then transition over into, you know, doing the JV deals that you're doing right now? What, what, did, what did you have to shift in your business model? I was always kind of concurrently looking for active deals to represent and passive deals. It was just kind of a, at the same time thing, part of my progression. Um, I kissed a lot of frogs in terms of underwriting deals. Um, we looked in Kansas City for darn near two years. In How FA. many? How many would you say? How oh, many my frogs? gosh. Oh my gosh, probably a hundred plus. Wow. I, I mean, there's zero chance I could have kept track. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, it's, it, it's really funny that once you've done uh, enough underwriting of deals, you, you remember you, the names of deals. It's, it's like other people like, do you know this deal? Do you know that? Whatever. So um, I, I wanted to find a market that was with a, a short flight from Chicago. So kind of in my backyard, but that, that met the metrics for GDP growth and population growth and, and job growth. Right. And for me here in the Midwest, that was Kansas City or Indianapolis. And, you know, we looked in Kansas City for so long uh, and didn't find, you know, kissed all those frogs and then ended up looking in Indy and found some stuff that made more sense there. So I, I think that having laser focus yet knowing when to pivot is super important. Mm -hmm. So, so what do you think is... Um, well, where are you going to take it from here? Let me ask you that. Are you going to continue to do JVs? Are you considering doing a syndication or all bets open? What are your thoughts? I'm kind of an opportunist. Okay. Uh, when things make sense and they're in my wheelhouse, I will do them. Um, I, we have a primary equity partner who wants to place a, a large amount of capital in the indie market, and we're going to do right by him. Uh, we know the criteria that he wants, and it's not your normal syndication. Um we're looking for longer term, high cash flow deals rather than a significant value add play. So it's different from what you would see in a normal syndication. And there's a lot more of those, in my opinion, right now, especially with rates as low as they are on agency mm -hmm. loans. Uh, so we're kind of chasing that as a, a first. Uh, more a more yield goal. place, more yield plays then. You're not not necessarily forced appreciation day one. Right. Well, and I, where cap rates are at, you know, I, um, the spreads I mean, there. Well, well, but I mean, in terms of, a, uh, you know, anyway, that's neither here nor there, but the, what I like right now is a high cash flow deal, very cash on cash heavy. We're acquiring it with debt that is assumable at a low rate for a very long term so that we have a lot of potential exits. Um, I like having options right now. So yeah, so I think we're- Do you have an asset You have an asset that fits that criteria that you're working on right now or you just made it sound like you were working a deal? So we actually uh, submitted an LOI on a 37 unit also in Indianapolis. And mm -hmm. just like everybody tells you, um, mm -hmm. I'm going to reiterate it, that once you close on a deal in a market, you are automatically the pretty girl at the dance and mm -hmm. everybody wants to talk to you about everything, right? So mm -hmm. we are getting significant deal flow now because we closed on that 53. So uh, we were, you know, submitted that LOI on the 37. We were the runner up, but we know that the guys ahead of us have already transacted with the seller and they were hard to work with, I guess. So mm -hmm. we're uh, hanging close to the rim on that one. And we're walking another... Um, 50 unit on Tuesday next week. Fantastic. So, let, let me, let me circle back on something you just said, okay. forgive me um, for stopping you. No so guys, if you're, you know, one thing that, that a lot of people don't realize, they think that, you know, mm -hmm. you, you get into a situation which they call best and final where you give your highest offer and it's usually three or four people on the buyer's side that the broker has relationships with that he's given first shot at this deal. And if you lose the deal, you, you're not the best and final. That doesn't mean the game's over. I can't tell you how often I've heard from operators and friends and people in my boardroom that circ that keep circling back with that broker and that original buyer for whatever reason can't perform and they're right back in the saddle again. So um, that's what she meant when she said that. Uh, hopefully you kept your train of thought. I interrupted you. Sorry. W were you concluded? No. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, we're, we, <laughs> okay. we are, you know, constantly underwriting deals that come our way and we're, you know, we're being flexible. We're knowing exactly what our wheelhouse is, but we're also being flexible. There's a couple of mixed use buildings that have um, some commercial space that we're, we're feeling out 
to see if that makes sense. I, I don't mm. love it right now, but if the deal retail is a little scary right now, it but, is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mm. But but I love that. I love uh, you know mixed use like that where you've got the multifamily above some retail. It's just uh, to me that's that's always such a nice uh, look and feel and. Uh, can be very, very lucrative uh, if you can get the right anchor tenant, you know, right retail mm-hmm. tenant in, in there. So let me ask you this, you know, what, how has the Warrior Group helped you? You've been in for about three years. What, what, what do you think are some of the biggest benefits you've gotten from being in, uh, in our group? I, you know, I'll tell you, it's number one, relationships. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you and I both love Tony Robbins too. And the people that, it's the people you meet when you're there are equally as important as the stuff that you learn and figure out. And the, the buds that I've made through, you know, being part of this, your, your organization are going to be my friends for, and business partners for, you know, a long time to come. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Love it. Love it. Is So I know you mentioned your target markets there, Indy, Kansas city, obviously Rod taught me, obviously you always want to do your own market research when you're picking markets, but a great place to start is looking at successful people and then following a proven wheel. Right. So what I want to know is what, what do you like and dislike about Indianapolis and Kansas city? Why why those markets and what are the downsides? Both of them meet the criteria that I want to see in terms of uh, job growth, GDP growth, that the type of um, employer diversification, both of them make sense in that way. That being said, uh, there's lots of people looking for that and lots of people look in those markets. So, you know, one thing that I think that we've done quite well is we figured out in terms of criteria, what are we willing, what do we need to have in terms of this formula? And then what are we willing to maybe bend on a little so that we're looking down rabbit holes and not everybody else's. And, you know, our choice, because we're looking in cash flow heavy plays to hold for a long time, we're considering smaller assets. The bigger assets are, are getting bid up still, in our opinion. Um, but we are bending on uh, maybe not going for 100 units. This 53 unit met um, criteria for agency debt, which got us really where we wanted to go. Maybe not as much scale, but we're, we're getting most of the benefit. Talk, talk about, uh, you know, just as an aside on that 53 unit, um, talk about, uh, are, are you managing yourself or third party? Third party. And, and is there any, does, that, does that size unit support any on-site staff? Uh, so we went with a group who they own some of their own and mm-hmm. in that same area. So they know it mm-hmm. really well. And they, they pull a property manager two days a week to sit on site. Interesting. So okay. yes and no. It, 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 did you address a potential conflict of interest with their ownership of competitive properties? Yeah. So they're, they've got a, it's a pretty strong C minus asset, I'll call it. And ours is a pretty strong B plus. Okay. So, um, you know, I don't think that, yeah, Yeah, they're different. Okay. Fair enough. So talk about, um, take a minute and talk about uh, a seminar. Talk about a mistake. When I messed up. Yeah. 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 I got, I got plenty of those. You got, yeah, you know? we all do. We all yeah. do. You're, you're, well, you're, see, you're, you're brave enough. Just you went right there. No problem. I can do that. Some people. Oh, yeah. no. What do you mean a mistake? I've never made a mistake. Come on. <laughs> I, my life is built on mistakes. So uh, I'll tell you. Um, you know, I think many people would echo not getting started quickly enough. The mm-hmm. you know imposter syndrome. You know, lack of confidence stuff, which I think happens to everyone, but is is very in my opinion, much stronger in terms of um, women. Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, I think, well, my biggest one is, uh, you know, trust but verify. You Mm -hmm. know, um, I was friends with someone first who, you know, chose to go in on a deal, actually trusted my instincts enough to know that we needed to do a smaller deal before going into a very, very large one. And, you know, ended up losing some cash in that process. But boy, am I glad I trusted my instincts to do something smaller before biting off a really huge deal. So Hmm. trust, trust, but verify, you know, do a background check on anyone that you're going to be doing a a deal with, you know, even if you think you've asked the pointed hard questions, you know, do the background search. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, So, so what can I ask, Mandy, what, what have been some of the, the most challenging parts of your business? I think you mentioned one there. It sounds like there's a lot of competition in going bigger uh, for more scale. But what 
What have been the most challenging pieces of growing your business lately here? Um, bandwidth. Uh, so I, my, my day job, it's, it's pretty demanding. I'm, you know, full custody, single mama. Um, so really wow. figuring out how to have impactful, deep work on any individual given thing. Um, I spent a lot of time kind of toying with time blocking and batching. And I've got a couple of hacks that have really worked for me you know, really listing out, these are the calls that I need to make. And then I know at 2 PM on Tuesday, I'm going to be working through calls or whatever that is really getting intentional about how I'm spending my time is, is one of the biggest things I've worked on. That is, and I'm so impressed with the fact that you use that phrase deep work. Uh, In fact, there's a book by that title, Mm -hmm. which I need to get. I saw it referenced in one of the business magazines uh, Mm -hmm. because uh, it's so freaking important, you know, with, 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 with our, our disjointed focus because of social media and scrolling and texting and everything mm-hmm. else, it's very, very hard to do that deep work and stay focused. So that's, that's awesome. And, and, you know, again, this is why I, I'm so impressed with you and, and with any single mom that, that is able to not only do a, you have a massive full-time job. It's a full-time square job. Even you've got a little guy and he's what, three, four, how old is he? Four and a half. Four Tell and a half. Now. And, yeah. and, and, and you're, you're, you're crushing it in multifamily real estate. So mm-hmm. those of you listening, tell me your freaking excuse. Okay. <laughs> Let me hear it. I just call me and tell me, and I want to hear it. So I will kick your butt when you do, because you haven't got one. Um, so, so true. I talk with people every day that say they've, uh, they don't have kids and they've got regular day jobs and they have a spouse that they could partner with and they still make excuses on right. why they can't do it. Right. And it's so it's all in their head. It's all in their head. So what inspires you, Mandy? Mm. Tell me what inspires you. Impact. Ooh, good answer. Mm. Well, on that note, let me give you a plug. So Mandy and a a couple of other warriors, and I think somebody outside the warrior group as well, have created this women's group. What's it called? Aspiring Women Achieving More. Aspiring Women Achieving More. Is that freaking awesome? So not only is she doing everything we just described, she's also helping run a a women's group to help women do more in their lives. Freaking love it. So impact, which you are having by virtue of that group, obviously. So um, tell me, tell us about an aha moment. Hmm. Um, So much of this whole process has been you know, figuring myself out. You know, the the idea of, you know, I, I've always kind of done things the right way. Like I was a, an athlete because I was supposed to be a division one athlete and I was, right? Like I did a master's degree because I was supposed to do a master's degree. Like I, I followed all the right scripts. Um, my primary life aha moment is that I get to pick where I put my focus, where I put my effort, and then therefore my outcomes are something that I get to pick. And I'm choosing to figure out this money stuff so that I can then go live the life of my dreams. I love it. I love it. And, 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 and you know, I tell the story about uh, uh, that, that hospice nurse in Australia that counseled mm-hmm. hospice patients and asked them a question, which was, do you have any regrets? And mm-hmm. the number one, she wrote a book about it called The Five Regrets of Dying. The number one was regret, regret was living someone else's life, living that yeah. life that, quote unquote, I was expected to live. Yeah. And so, you know, that's awesome that you, that you came to that realization. So what do you think is the best advice you've ever received? Just do it. I, Just I mean, it. the thing is, end of the day, the learning is awesome. It is. It's important. It's necessary. But until you've start, started to cut your teeth on things, it's a muscle, you guys. Like, it's just like anything that, you know, you're scared of whatever. The minute you get past it, you realize, oh, my God, I didn't die. Oh, my gosh, Rod, you said I would do that fourplex. And then I did that fourplex. And then I had $1,100 coming in cash flow every single month. That is the opposite of dying. You know, like that was a tremendous success. If you just, you know, get to the point that you know enough, you've got to at some point, like let go of that branch because you're, you're going to fly if you've learned what you know you've learned. And, and we get so many analytical people that feel like, 
you know, they have to check off every freaking mm-hmm. box. They have to see the whole road or, you know, they, they have to they have to know every person intimately before they can do business or, you know, they have all of these rationales. And, and, I, and I give the analogy that you can drive all the way across the United States at night, mm-hmm. seeing 10 feet, 15, 20 feet in front of you and you'll make it. You'll know you'll make it. You may, you may not, you don't know the obstacles you're going to encounter, but it's like your goals. It's like anything else. You don't have to see the whole freaking path and check off every box to take action because action will mitigate the fear that you have, yeah. that analysis paralysis. So I have so, a quote up on my vision board right here. I was going to ask you that next. What's your favorite quote? Let's hear it. Well, I mean, this is my, my, my favorite quote is whether you think you can or you think right. you can't, you're right. But yeah. another one I have up on my vision board is that avoidance doesn't extinguish fear. Action does. There you go. It's a very absolute. It's, it's, it's counterintuitive. The action mitigates the fear, you know, mm-hmm. so. Well, yeah. I want to give it another little example on that. So a seminar I did, and I know you did too, mm-hmm. uh, you have to climb a 50-foot telephone pole. And I am scared of heights. Oh, and you so, don't just have to climb it. You have to keep, tell the whole story. You, you <laughs> climb it, and then you you go from having climbed it to standing, my palms are sweating talking about this, to <laughs> standing on top, and then you jump off and grab a trapeze bar. So yes. the, the now, thing now, is- now, now, just so you guys can picture this, you don't have anything to hold on to when you're trying to stand on top of this thing that's about eight feet around with your two little, two, with, in my case, your two size 14 feet <laughs> and you have nothing holding you and you got to stand there and then you've got to jump and go grab this trapeze. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll tell you my big lesson from that. And when I look back at those pictures of having done that, it's mm-hmm. what a lesson in when you're scared of something something, when you don't know what to do, when you're fearful, just do the next step and Mm. you will figure it out. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Love it. What a great example. Absolutely. So, so what, what's next for you, Mandy? You know, you, you see yourself quitting your job soon, expanding this multifamily business. What's, what's the next goal for you then to take down? Yeah. So I'm a pretty strategic, pragmatic individual and the, the way I think about my investing, it's kind of two buckets. I have a very security heavy bucket. And then I have my let's swing for the fences, you know, huge value add growth bucket. Well, I've, I've pragmatically decided that once I hit my dollar value required, uh, I'll have my financial freedom. And I, I hit that with the acquisition of this, this 53 unit. So my plan is I I love my day job. I love this chance to impact patients' lives and the group I work with. So I'm going to do it as long as it's fun. Um, And we're going to continue building that footprint in Indianapolis and do right by that partner and then work towards syndication. So just so, so I want to make sure I heard you correctly and everyone on the show here heard you correctly. That one deal made you financially independent. It, it put me over the top. My okay. four and my so I, I my goals were cash flow focused rather than right. number of doors. Good as they so, should be. So and I actually made a calculator on this, like a spreadsheet, which I'd be happy to share if you're interested. Okay, all right. Uh, that kind of helps you figure out what level you need to reach different levels of financial freedom. Is, and it, is this what you shared with the warrior group? It is. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Let, let's, um, let's make sure you send that to me and I'll throw it in the show notes for this sure. particular episode. Okay. Wonderful. Happy well, what, I, what I'm hearing there is what, uh, uh, how many years have you been doing this? So soup to nuts, um, that fourplex I bought four years ago. There you go. Mm-hmm. Four years. Most people work 40 years and they don't reach financial freedom. And because of multifamily and real estate, you were able to technically do it in four years. I mean, if that doesn't get you inspired to get out there and do this business and make the next jump, I don't know what will. Yeah. And and, and on that note, you know, guys, if you're interested in our warrior program, text the word crush to 41411 and we'll have you, you know, we'll see, you'll see if you're, if, if we're a fit for you and and we'll see if you're a fit for us, we'll have a a little application process, but I I promise you, you get on that call and you'll be a better person after you get off the call than when you got on it, whether we work together or not. Um, But uh, uh, also, you know, I've got a couple more questions for you, Mandy, because uh, I just, uh, want to know what you think. Uh, and one of the questions I have for you is, what is your favorite part of this business? What do you love about the multifamily business? You know, I, I love that 
in anything in my life, when I can take focus outside of myself and make it about making someone else's life better, mm. then everything in my life in turn becomes better. And by definition, making a better place for someone to live is how I've increased cash flow, which has put me in a position to have financial freedom, you know? So I'm impacting and receiving at the same time. Remember guys, she said her word was impact. So she's impacting and receiving and anything you give, you get back tenfold. And I'm going to tell you guys in, in my warrior program, when I ask someone on our initial call or the second or third call, you know, their why. And if I hear contribution in any way, shape or form, I know success is inevitable because power, God, whatever you believe, God, the universe, whatever you believe, power moves to those that serve. And so that, that, that speaks to it. I love it. Um, so I want to ask you the question that I ask uh, uh, regularly on my other, on the other episodes, which is, you know, if you could go back and tell your 20 year old self, I know you're only 21, but if you could go back and tell your 20 year old self <laughs> <laughs> what you might do differently, um, what might that be? Uh, interesting that you say that. Cause I've, I've had some, calls with friends, siblings that are roughly that age. And the one thing that I tell them, you know, it's all kind of surrounding. I wish I would have gotten started earlier, but Mm -hmm. my gosh, had I bought a fourplex and lived in one and house hacked and moved out, you know, I, the world would look completely different at at this point. Had I started that way. Yeah. Yeah. And, And guys, if you're young and, 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 and it may in or out or in, in or not in a relationship and mama's okay with not having the white picket fence and you and, and you're okay with getting or into a fourplex Papa. like or, or Papa. Papa. okay sorry 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 <laughs> that was sexist as hell wasn't it I'm gonna get I'm gonna get so much shit for that uh, anyway it, it, you're right it, if you don't need the picket fence male or female <laughs> then for God's sakes house hack and do a fourplex um, because you can get into it for a song and a dance down 30 year fixed financing, some as low as 3% down. If you're a vet, nothing down. Um, and uh, it's such, such an incredible way to start. What haven't we asked you that we should have asked you, Mandy? Hmm. Um, any roadblocks? Are there any, were there any roadblocks that you had to overcome that, you know, maybe we helped you overcome or you had to figure out on your own? Anything come to mind with that question? You know, I'll, I'll tell you, like, the, I think the one thing in my life that keeps coming up whenever I see that a success has happened, it's that I have this sometimes completely unfounded belief, but I have this belief that I can figure it out, you know, and I'm going to find the right people to put in my life, the right resources to put in my life to figure out whatever that thing is. And, you know, if you, if you just, if you can prove it to yourself a time or two, that confidence is going to continue to grow that you can figure it out. Uh, there's a really great book called everything is figure outable that I found a couple months ago. That was Mm. fantastic. You, Mm. you guys like it's, I am 0% special. I promise you, I am a farm kid from a small town, but I, I just, refuse to believe that I can't figure it out because I can figure it out. Well, I disagree with the fact that you're not special because you are definitely special. And I totally agree with your comment about being able to figure it out. Anything you put your total focus and energy to is going to flourish. And if it doesn't, then take a look in the mirror and say, am I really giving it everything? Because I promise you, you're not. Thank you so much for being on the show, Mandy. Such a treat to see you and have a little My time pleasure. with you and 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 just to to you know go full circle in this relationship and yeah. have you on the show is just so freaking awesome. So <laughs> I'm so so grateful. Thank you for having me. Yep, yep. Yeah, great having you, Mandy. All right. Rob, I know a lot of our listeners are wanting to take their multifamily investing business to the next level. Now I know you've been hard at work helping our warrior students do just that using our ACT methodology, which is awareness, close, and transform. Can you explain to the listeners how they can get our help? You bet. Guys, we've been going nonstop for three years, building an amazing community of like-minded people. And our coaching students, which we call our warriors, have had extraordinary results. They've purchased thousands and thousands of units. And last year, we did over a thousand units with our students. And we're looking to grow this group and take it to the next level. 
We're looking for people who want to follow a proven framework that's really step by step and then leverage our systems and network to raise equity, to find and close deals, and to build partnerships nationwide. Now, our warrior community is finding success in any market cycle. So, if you're interested in finding out more about how you can become more of our incredible network and take advantage of the incredible opportunities that are coming very soon, apply to work with us at mentorwithrod.com or text CRUSH to 41411. That's mentorwithrod.com or text CRUSH to 41411.